Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We're going to kick things off with a plethora of AMD news. And we're going to kick things off with something regarding Zen 2. And what we have here is yet another Linux kernel support listing, as we have Linux kernel support patches for next generation CPUs. And these are for the Epic 2 Rome CPUs. So this is not for, you know, Ryzen 3 or something that you or I might be interested in, but it is again for Epic 2. So what we have here is EDAC updates for Linux 4.2 to 5.0. And this is regarding error reporting functionality, which is mostly used for server and workstation. Now, unfortunately, there are no juicy details being revealed by this new code, but the patch itself is basically adding new models to the AMD 64 EDAC code. And it is basically the the sort of crux of the changes is, quote, add family 17H models 10H to 2FH support, which builds upon the previous model 11H Great Horned Owl support for EDAC. So, again, nothing to write home about, nothing to set the world alight, but it does make perfect sense. And we also see initial XGMI support on the graphics driver side for Vega 20. So we're just basically seeing them laying the sort of pathway for Zen 2 here for Linux. And speaking of Vega, I actually have something rather interesting as we have a benchmark leak for Vega 20. So before I actually launch into this particular topic, I just want to say with a very, very massive caveat here that this is clearly, very, very clearly going to be a early engineering sample. And by early, I mean early not only that, we also do not know which version of Vega 20 this is. It could be a Radeon Pro Vega 7NM, Radeon RX Vega 7NM, or of course the final possibility it could all be fake, which is very, very real possibility. So you will see some slides in just a second. It isn't actually listed as Vega, it's listed as its device ID 66AF colon C1. And it has been listed in various places as part of the Vega 20 family. So we do know that if this is real, this is definitely Vega 20. But we don't know, again, which Vega 20 it is. But also we don't know important information about the graphics card. Like, say, for example, it could have had half of its cache enabled. Or some of the streaming processes went on. Or something like that. We don't know very important details about the graphics card. And, and, but most importantly, as I say... We don't even know which version of 7NM Vega this even is. And there's important things in consideration like drivers and all that sort of stuff as well on the software side. So what do we actually see in terms of performance here? So what we see, and again this is the 66AF colon C1 listing on this particular graphs, is it falling just between the GTX 1080 and RX Vega 64 which obviously is going to be a bit of a disappointing result given that obviously this is kind of AMD's next high-end GPU. But again, as I just said, not only this is very early, we do not know anything about the graphics card itself, what was enabled, what was disabled on the actual core itself, that sort of thing. Driver support is very, very important. But across all of the resolutions and quality settings, we see it pretty much nestled in the same exact place. It's not always... Above Vega, for instance, um, on the 2560 by 1440 high quality one, we see it between the 1080 and the 1070 Ti, but it is sort of around that margin, generally speaking, of between the 1080 and the RX Vega 64, which again is going to disappoint some, but do keep in mind everything that I've already said. And of course, there's a very important factor that if this is indeed the Radeon Pro, that's not obviously intended for gaming. Now obviously AMD have kind of said, look, this is going to be not for gaming, it's going to be for machine learning, that sort of thing, so it could be very possible this is not a gaming GPU, that's also why, but it's entirely possible that AMD have changed their minds and have decided to do a gaming version of 7nm Vega 20 because of course they have literally nothing in the high end at the moment and obviously NVIDIA has the run of the place with the RX 2080, 2080 Ti, and of course the 2070 as well. So yeah, these performance numbers are a little bit disappointing off the get-go, but 
they are very, very early engineering sample benchmarks. So do keep that in mind. I would fully expect them to massively improve before we actually see the graphics card, whichever one this ends up being, actually launch. But let's move on from Vega to the more familiar RX Radeon 590. As we have yet more proof surfacing for the existence of the RX 590, as we have a listing found for the Power Color Radeon RX 590 SKU. And what's also interesting is that this particular listing confirms the 8GB GDDR5 memory configuration. So it's all lining up rather nicely and we can pretty much expect that the 590 is indeed going to be launching in a few weeks. But that's not the only Radeon thing I have for you today. As we have confirmation from AMD that they are indeed ending 32-bit Radeon display driver support. is actually is going to begin this month, I would assume, at the end of this month, given that it basically is almost over somehow. It's my birthday tomorrow. It's... I'm running really quick. Anyway, so basically what's going to happen is that AMD are no longer going to offer 32-bit drivers for Radeon graphics cards. So the last 32-bit driver is going to be the Radeon software Adrenaline 18.9.3 WHQL, which was released on October the 5th. Of course, AMD are a little bit behind in video on this. Well, I say a little bit. They're fairly behind in video on this because they ended their 32-bit driver support back in December of last year. So this is going to affect probably like maybe one of you, maybe, out of all of our subscribers. I'd be even surprised if it's one of you because obviously the chances of you buying a 32-bit only system in the current year, I hate the current year argument, but it does actually find itself relevant here. It's basically close to nil. But it does still mark the end of an era, and obviously this does mean that both of the big dogs in the graphics card space have stopped supporting 32-bit display drivers. So we're going to finish things up today with a bit of good news regarding the Xbox Game Pass. As of course this was launched back in June of last year, and you pretty much know what it is at this point, I'm sure. It allows you to install and play Xbox games, not obviously Xbox 360, and original Xbox, not just Xbox One games, and there are a couple of hundred games currently available, but it is, of course, currently only on the console itself. However, Satya Nadella, who is the CEO of Microsoft, has announced that the Xbox Game Pass is actually going to be making its way to PC soon. Now, unfortunately, details are pretty much that. 100%, yep, it's coming to PC at some point is basically what he said. We don't know what games are going to be included in the subscription price, which is currently $10 a month, but we do know that it is eventually coming. Now, it would not be surprising at all to see this be an exclusive to the Windows 10 store, which is a bit of a like, oh god, really? But, you know, again, that would be, it'd be more surprising if that didn't happen, let's be real. So, obviously, Microsoft have been making good on their promise to pay more attention to the PC market and this would make perfect sense. Obviously it would allow, assuming that it is literally just a straight sort of quote-unquote port of the current Xbox Game Pass system, which obviously we don't know if it is or isn't going to be, we would see numerous games come to PC that obviously perhaps never saw the light of day there or perhaps are very difficult to run nowadays, that sort of thing. It would be really, really cool to see that happen. It might be a limited selection at first with it expanding as we go. Obviously not every game that is currently available on the Xbox Game Pass is going to be uh, compatible on PC. There's that to consider as well. So I would fully expect it to not be the current full library um, based on you know porting issues, blah, 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 blah. But even if you say it's a, a selection of the games currently available with more being added in the future, it is still really nice to see them doing this particular move. And I really, really th support it. Massive thumbs up from me, Microsoft, for that one. So... GG. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal. And if you'd be so inclined, do check us out on Patreon as well. Even if you don't end up giving us a dollar or what have you, do know that your support really does make a huge difference both myself and Paul. So thank you again for watching. And see you next time. Bye-bye.